inscribed angle, intercepted arc, and subtens. We're at 12.4a. Now back in video 5.2b, we learned about circles inscribed in polygons. So that red circle P is inscribed in that triangle ABC. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So angle ABC is an inscribed angle. B is on the circle, that's the vertex, and segment AB and segment BC are chords. An intercepted arc consists of endpoints that lie on the sides of an inscribed angle and all the points of the circle between them. So arc AC here is the intercepted arc of angle ABC. A chord or arc subtends an angle if its endpoints lie on the sides of the angle. And when a central angle intercepts an arc, the arc is said to subtend the angle. So arc AC subtends angle ABC. So for your notes, the inscribed angle, it has a vertex on the circle. The sides contain chords. So our inscribed angle is angle BAC. The intercepted arc, its endpoints lie on the sides of the inscribed angle and all points on the circle between them. So arc BC is the intercepted arc. For subtends, that's a chord or arc has endpoints that lie on the sides of the angle. So arc BC subtends angle BAC from point A. So again, for your notes, inscribed angle theorem 12.4.1, it says the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle ABC is half the measure of arc AC. For case two, the measure of angle ABC is half the measure of arc AC. And in case three, same thing. This angle is half the measure of arc AC. We can prove that an angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So this is case one. We have ABC. The vertex B is on the circle. We have arc AC. And it's given that angle ABC is inscribed in circle P. We need to prove that the measure of angle ABC is equal to half the measure of arc AC. We're going to do a paragraph proof, and I've got paper here because I don't want you to get confused because paragraph proofs are not as neat and tidy as two column proofs. So for the first thing we have for our paragraph proof is angle ABC, this red angle, is inscribed in circle P with P on segment BC. That's actually a diameter, isn't it? That would mean PB is a radius, PC is a radius, right? We draw segment PA right here, this orange one, and that would be a radius too, wouldn't it? And the measure of arc AC right here is equal to the measure of angle APC. So here we have a central angle, don't we? If we ignore this part of it, and we just look at this little right angle right here. And by the exterior angle theorem, the measure of angle APC, that's APC right here, is equal to the measure of angle ABP. ABP. Plus the measure of angle BAP. BAP. So this angle measure right here, okay, I drew the little arc, is equal to the measure of this little angle and this little angle. Since this orange segment PA and PB are radii of the circle, then segment PA is congruent to segment PB. 
then by definition, triangle APB, APB, this one right here, is isosceles. So the measure of angle ABP, ABP, this one right here, is equal to the measure of angle BAP, BAP. So we made this perpendicular here. It's a radius, and that means that big one right here is a 90 degree angle, right? That means that's a 90 degree angle. So we have an isosceles triangle here that's 45, 45, 90 degrees. By the substitution property, the measure of arc AC up here, this green arc, is equal to two times the measure of angle ABP. ABP. So if this is 90 degrees, and we have a 90 degree arc, don't we? And if this is 45 degrees and that's 45 degrees, well, then two times this angle measure is going to equal that arc. Or two times the measure of angle ABC. Okay? Either way. So therefore, half the measure of arc AC is equal to the measure of angle ABC. Hopefully that makes sense. We can find measures of arcs and inscribed angles. Take a look at this diagram. We need to find the measure of angle RST, RST. So we need to find the measure of this angle up here. Well, the measure of angle RST is gonna equal half the measure of arc RT. This angle right here with S as its vertex is gonna equal half of this given 120 degree arc RT. That's the inscribed angle theorem. So half of the 120 would be 60. We substitute the 120 for arc RT. And we know that this angle measure right here for RST is 60 degrees. It wants us to find the measure of arc SU. That would be this one up here. And the measure of angle SRU, SRU, R, U, so right here, this 40 degree one, is equal to half the measure of arc SU. That's, again, the inscribed angle theorem. Well, it told us that was 40 degrees, so 40 degrees is equal to half the measure of arc SU. We can multiply both sides by two or by the reciprocal of half as two over one, and we get 80 degrees is equal to the measure of arc SU. We can use a symmetric property of equality to let us swap their places to write that the measure of angle of arc SU is equal to 80 degrees. Now, do you remember we discussed a while back that a corollary is a theorem whose proof follows directly from another theorem? That brings us to corollary 12.4.2. The proof follows directly from the inscribed angle theorem that we just did. So the corollary says if inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc or are subtended by the same chord or arc, then the angles are congruent. So the hypothesis is that we have this red one, this pink one, and this lime green one. I'm sorry for anyone who has trouble with colors. So Angle ACB, ACB, that's this one right here. Angle ADB, that's the pink one right here. And angle AEB, that's the lime green one, intercept arc AB. All three of those angles have an arc of AB, don't they? Our conclusion is that Angle ACB is congruent to angle ADB, which is congruent to angle AEB, and actually angle CAE is congruent to angle CBE. That would be CAE, so it would be coming across here and then down, is congruent to CBE, because they're sharing this arc CE, aren't they? And take a look at this diagram. This is string art. And 
you put pins or nails around the circumference of a circle and you tie one end off and you just keep making triangles moving to the next pin. And I'm going to have a link in the description about how to do string art. So we can use inscribed angles to find measures of angles in string art. String art often begins with pins or nails that are placed around the circumference of a circle. Then a long piece of string or yarn is wound from one nail to another. And we may get a pattern that includes hundreds of inscribed angles. So take a look at this diagram here. This is a circumference and it's got little pins around it like it's string art. We can find the measure of angle DEC, that's this one right here, if the measure of arc AD is equal to 86 degrees. Angle BAC, BAC, this one right here, the 60 degree one, is congruent to BDC, BDC, this one right here. They both share this arc BC, don't they? Angle BAC and angle BDC intercept arc BC. They're congruent to each other. And if they're congruent, they're equal, aren't they? That's the definition of congruence. So the measure of angle BDC is equal to 60 degrees. It gave us that. We substitute that in for measure angle BDC. The measure of angle ACD, ACD, this one right here, is equal to half the measure of arc AD. So we know this angle right here has this arc AD that is 86 degrees, so we know it's equal to half that, which is 43 degrees. So we know this one is 43 degrees, okay? We know that this one is 60 because it shares arc BC, and the measure of angle DEC, this one up here, plus that 60 degrees plus that 43 degrees equals 180 degrees, because that's the triangle sum theorem, right? So that means, if we add these together, that the measure of angle DEC plus this 103 should equal 180. We can subtract 103 from both sides of the equal sign, and we get that the measure of angle DEC is equal to 77 degrees. So make sure you've written this down and you learn what each of these mean, because that's going to help you, okay? We have three more parts to this lesson 12.4. We've got B, C, and D still to do. So for 12.4b, we're going to talk about inscribed triangles and inscribed quadrilaterals. Then we're going to move on to construct center of a circle. And then we're going to do construct tangent to a circle from an external point, from an exterior point in 12.4d. So you can click on the description and check out the video about string art. There's also a game that you can buy called Spirograph. It's like a little art set, and you can make all kinds of cool designs with different circles and angles. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.